I can't tell if this is bad lighting or not, but it's almost 2 in the morning and I really want to film this video, so welcome to my channel. <laughs> If you are new and you're here for the PCOS content, I'll try to keep this short. Essentially, it is very, very late. I just got off a six hour FaceTime call with my friend Bennett. It was not supposed to be that long and I told her I had to film after this. So even though it's almost two in the morning, I am dedicated because tonight I did really want to talk about this. So here we are, cheers. It's gonna get really, really personal. So buckle up because here we go. So if you've been following my channel for a while, you know that about a year ago, I posted a video about my health and diagnosis because January of 2020, I was finally actually diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. This last year, I've definitely learned a lot of tips and things that helped me personally with my own diagnosis, as well as things that I think might help you. So throughout my videos this last year, I've definitely mentioned here and there that I have PCOS and I've gotten a lot of requests to do like a full video about my journey about like how I cope with it anything that I do to help with it so that is what this video is I hope that this helps I hope that you enjoy also I'm in PJs so I have shorts on and this little tank it's technically like a bra I guess it's a chill vibe tonight it's literally late I have wine like this will be in my hand all night I just want to talk okay we're not here to like make commentary about my outfit speaking of my outfit I know in my last like four videos it looks like I've worn the same thing no I just filmed them all on the same day so it really doesn't matter but if anyone notices that I promise I wear other things like tonight I've moved on to Christmas PJs I just filmed a lot that day because that day was dedicated to filming and I didn't change my outfit at all so it was on the same day I promise okay carrying on so I just want to start with doing like a really big basic background on how I found out that I have this because I've made a couple of videos about it here and there but I've never like fully addressed it in one for years it's always been a possibility I definitely have struggled with a lot of different issues here and there that the doctors always told me you know you could have PCOS but we don't know or like we can't diagnose this but maybe PCOS you can't just diagnose you can't just like take a test and have it come back positive for PCOS it's something that someone definitely has to observe and learn about you over time to make a educated diagnosis that you probably have it and for me my gynecologists have always said like oh you might have this we don't know though and a really big factor is that most people with PCOS are overweight I don't really know why this causes it or what that plays into a part but they always told me like because you're so young and you're not overweight we don't know but I was constantly in the gynecologist office with severe cysts they referred to it as a string of pearls meaning that I had a string of pearls of cysts around my ovaries it was so painful most people can't feel when they have cysts I feel them every single month we finally learned after January when I went to see a specialist that I am NOT ovulating this is what's causing the string of pearls I'm not a doctor I'm not a professional this is just my own experience I'm not trying to tell you what to do or give you medical help this is just my experience and what I've learned so please Please take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I had constantly struggled with cysts and people always told me I might have PCOS. I've spent so many years of my adult life in urgent care and the ER and my gynecologist with so many issues that looking back it was so clear what I had yet none of them like fully diagnosed me. They just said you know it could be this but we don't know and something that really finalized it was I was 24 when I was diagnosed but at 24 I'd never had a regular cycle. It was always like every five to eight weeks sometimes it would be 40 to 60 days in between cycles like I never knew when to expect my period yeah I'm like pretty skinny I guess so I thought I just wasn't building up like enough body fat for it a lot of the things that cause it are being overweight not exercising facial hair like high levels of testosterone things like that before I was diagnosed a lot of doctors when I asked about PCOS would ask me like well do you have a lot of body hair because if you have high testosterone levels like women with PCOS, testosterone can cause body hair. I have dark hair as it is. Do you think I'm gonna know the difference between if I have high testosterone or if it's genetics? And I was young and I really didn't know and so I was just like maybe, like it's just things that seemed so subjective where she was like you might but like we don't know, probably not. And then in January I went to this new specialist, this really great clinic that just is so amazing in so many ways and immediately they validated what I was going through, they did an ultrasound, they saw the string of pearls. I have not been ovulating so the sac, this is 
like TMI. But like when you ovulate, again, I'm also not a doctor, so if I'm wrong, I apologize. But when you ovulate, you have a sac that like is on your ovary and then it falls off and, and that's like ovulating. Mine weren't falling off, they were just staying there. So I had so many on my ovaries causing a string of pearls, which is just like a string of cysts and they got really, really big and they were so painful. They weren't big enough to surgically remove. So I was kind of stuck. That definitely was a really big indicator that I struggled with PCOS because this isn't something that everyone has if you have PCOS, but a lot of people don't ovulate when you have PCOS because you're not producing enough estrogen to release an egg. So you have too much testosterone in your body, like irregular hormones. I mean, I know for a straight up fact that I do not have enough estrogen in my freaking body. If I did, I wouldn't be in this extra small sports bra from Target. <laughs> So PCOS is something that you have your whole life. It doesn't go away. I will always have PCOS, but there are a lot of things that you can do that I've learned this year to help with it, to maintain it. And the number one thing that my doctor told me and asked right away is, are you exercising regularly? Do you work out? Because something that helps balance your hormones, which is the number one thing to do with PCOS is learning to balance your hormones, trying to get your estrogen levels high enough to ovulate. Because even though I don't want to have kids right now, I definitely want to at some point. And the number one thing that my doctor asked and asked right away is are you exercising like do you work out because that can help balance your hormones so much at the time i definitely wasn't a year ago i was not as committed to working out as i am today and the only reason that i do work out almost every single day now and i'm so committed to the gym and working out at home and doing everything is because of my diagnosis so that's my number one tip if you are trying to balance your hormones if you need to also increase your estrogen levels work out because it's so good for your body it's so good for your health i actually have a full video on my fitness journey so i'll link that above as well as down below if you want to know more about that i filmed that right after I was diagnosed because I had so much like new energy to work on my body and my health and be like I'm going to fix this I want to ovulate I want to keep a more regular cycle like I always track my cycle because right now it's about 40 days apart but like I really want to get back to like what is it every 28 days that that's crazy to me that people have their periods every 28 days because mine is so far in between that. I've become very, very aware of my body now with like tracking my cycle. I take an ovulation test almost every single morning. So I buy this pack from Amazon. I'll link it down below. It's a 60 pack, I believe, for like 13 bucks. So it's super, super cheap. But I take them almost every single day just to see where my levels are. The tests actually cannot tell whether or not you were ovulating. It can just measure your LH level. But if your LH levels are really high, it means that you've ovulated. If it's high, 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 low, high for a few days and high again, it means that your body is continuously trying to ovulate. If throughout your cycle you are high for like three to four days and then you go back down to negative for the rest of your cycle, it means that your body successfully ovulated. Again, not a professional, just what I've learned. I could be wrong, but I'm like 99% sure. Usually midway through my cycle, my ovulation tests are always incredibly high because my body is continuously trying to ovulate, but I don't think it's doing it because the levels are always so high and that's why I track it. That's why I take so many tests. That's something else I've been doing this whole year that I've learned to help with my cycle, working out, tracking my ovulation tests, tracking my cycle, being really aware of my body, transitioning more into diet and what I've done to help increase estrogen levels and lower testosterone. I've definitely looked up a lot on information on different foods that help with your diet or increase estrogen levels or help lower testosterone. So the first thing that I did was look for foods that were high in estrogen because I wasn't getting enough estrogen naturally, which could be a big reason why I have such small boobs my whole life. Like I love them. I love them dearly, but like definitely it plays a part. So of course the number one thing that a lot of people, specifically men, are like afraid of is soy, including more soy into my diet. Instead of almond milk, now I just drink soy milk. I buy two cartons of soy milk, one sweetened, one unsweetened, constantly have soy milk in the fridge, definitely helps. I mean, it's good for calcium, it's good for your estrogen levels, helps my diet, so that's good. Another thing that I have listed is avocados. Avocados are like so amazing for so many things. It clears up your skin, has so many vitamins, it's just good for you and it's hydrating. Obviously, vitamin C and then vegetables have so many great vitamins that you may not get in a lot of other foods. I mean, like edamame has a lot of soy in it, so just things like that to help increase estrogen levels that by proxy will decrease increase testosterone levels. Speaking of that, I've also Googled and researched a ton of things on what helps lower testosterone levels. And from what I've read and what I've incorporated into my diet, 
peppermint tea according to like sites on Google and stuff like that so I don't know but from what I've read peppermint tea licorice root not like licorice candy but the root itself I guess is like really good for this be aware of that not every single store has it flaxseed you can get this at Trader Joe's Whole Foods probably Target at this point flaxseed is really good for lowering testosterone levels and then I actually started taking a daily vitamin I started well I've been taking a multi daily vitamin as well as a vitamin D but I started taking folic acid as well which is really good for women of childbearing years according to the bottle but it's also good if you're trying to get pregnant because it can help increase the hormones that you need to ovulate and get pregnant which hello me I really need to try to ovulate I started taking folic acid which is just really good for you if you're a woman highly recommend I feel like I've noticed a difference when I've started taking that vitamin if you watch my video on coming to terms with my diagnosis I think that's the title I'll link that vlog above as well as down below that is the vlog when I purchased these vitamins as well as talk more about what I'm doing to help with my diagnosis but I've been taking them since that vlog and I do think that they're helping at least try to bring my cycle more to like a regular cycle I guess a lot of people have commented different books that they recommend or things online and I've bookmarked them I've added them to my wish list I forget what one of them is called I think it's like the period book I know it has a pink cover I'll try to find it and put it on the screen right now but the majority of people have recommended this I haven't read it but I'm sure it's really helpful so I'll link that as well but for like changes and what I'm doing that's essentially it you know just trying to exercise every single day for my health for PCOS to balance my hormones incorporating things into my diet that help increase estrogen levels to encourage ovulation so like a lot of soy products and vitamins and vegetables and vitamin C vitamin D folic acid which is really good for you just trying to lower my testosterone levels I am seeing my doctor next month I think so it'll be great to have almost like a year update just to see what's been going on overall like my PCOS feels very manageable. There are definitely like so many things that I just don't have answers to. And you know, in the years to come, like when I am trying to have a kid, I don't know what struggles I'm going to have. I don't know if it's going to be easy or difficult. The chances of miscarrying is so high when you have PCOS because your hormone levels just are not high enough to maintain a healthy pregnancy. And it's just such a high risk of miscarrying. So that is definitely a high fear. And that is why I'm trying so hard to be active and working out and taking my vitamins, trying to shift it but it's only been a year so I really don't know that's kind of like my update this last year I will always have this the cats are fighting I will always have this it's not going away but for what I'm doing like this first year of knowing that I have finally been diagnosed even though I felt like I've had this for years that's the update that's what I've been doing that's what I've been eating taking and exercising for let me know if you have any questions or things that you'd like to add to this because I can definitely make more update videos on this I also would love to hear your individual experiences with PCOS I am also curious I've heard that because I'm from Asian descent it might be a reason why I have it I don't know I don't know where I got that information from what article I read but I remember reading something about it I don't know I would really like to see like a specific specialist for this someday and get better like help but for what I can control I feel very much in control of what I can control and that's important because there's so much that I can't control with this of course a really big suggestion that a lot of doctors will have especially when you're just diagnosed with PCOS is they want to request that you get on birth control right away birth control is like its own thing that comes with its own side effects factors things to consider before taking it and i've been on it before i'm not currently on it for personal reasons that's another thing and i feel like a lot of people with pcos go on to birth control because they want to have a normal cycle and help with that but the thing about birth control is it prevents you from ovulating that's literally how you don't get pregnant when you're on bc is it doesn't allow you to ovulate the amount of hormones in the pill prevent you from ovulating i'm trying to ovulate the fact that i can't is birth control enough for me knock on wood <laughs> But yeah, that's basically everything that I have on PCOS. Thank you so much for watching and definitely let me know if you have any questions or things that you want to add. I'm going to link all other videos about my PCOS journey down below. Definitely subscribe because I post a ton of videos, not necessarily all about PCOS, but I do include this. And I'll link the ovulation tests that I buy down below. I also buy pregnancy tests in bulk too. There's like eight bucks for 20 of them you know how expensive they are. So I'll link that down below as well if you're curious because like I said, I only get my period like every two months and sometimes you can really get to your head about wondering 
things. So taking those tests occasionally also really helped just clear my anxiety. Okay, I should go to bed. Please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. It does help. Comment down below your thoughts, experience, tips, anything you want to add. I'd love to hear your experiences, suggestions. I'm not an expert, like I keep saying, so I can also use some tips. So if you know something that helped with your PCOS, I'm dying to hear about it. Please subscribe. Follow me on Instagram if you want, and I'll see you guys next week with a new video. Good night! I was so hurt and upset that I never gave him another chance.